So let's say you're about to get on a bike ride, and you get on your favorite bike, you put on your wonderful helmet, and you are a safe bike rider. You might not be the best bike rider in the world, but you know when to look left, when to look right, and avoid any form of traffic collisions. Sometimes though, even when you're the safest bike rider possible, the system will be working against you. Tom Scott, a YouTuber, talked about an intersection in Britain where it is perfectly designed to put bicyclists in the blind spot of cars and cars in the blind spots of cyclists. The simulations showing how this happens are absolutely grotesque, and it's pretty terrifying as it kills about two people every year. The reason why this hasn't been fixed is a very complicated process and something that Tom Scott goes more into, but one of the ways that we could encourage the likelihood of people fixing it is if we instigated something known as a statistical life. This is a concept where you put a price on life. How much value is a person in dollars actually worth? Now this is related to the concept known as human capital, which is a term for what you invest in as a state. A state meaning like a government corporation, a company. Basically, investing in human capital means that your workforce, your workers, are going to be better off. So this is things like healthcare or health education for preventative care. If you have people who are healthier longer in life, then they cost less at the end of their life, get sick less during their life, and thus save money all the time and also work more because they're sick less. This increases tax revenue and possible production. Schooling's another example. The smarter that your workforce is, the more innovation and creation of jobs they're able to do. Typically earn higher wages as well when they're the type of people who are schooled more Thus, it increases the overall tax revenue that a country can get. And then housing, therapy, parks, anything that just makes people happier improves production, tax revenue, length of life, more likely to just have better interactions with other people, thus increasing innovations and other valuable things, basically making more money for the country or state. So how do you actually put a price on life? Are some people more valuable than others? Yes, but also no. It's actually very complicated and can be difficult to nail down. There are some discussions that the idea that a younger person will have a greater value because they're more likely to work for their entire life, thus create more innovation, more tax revenue. However, let's say an older person is like a monk and they have meditation skills that they share with lots of people. Well, this can make lots of other people spiritually more happy, thus increasing their productivity because they're happier people. Thus, the societal benefit of the monk may be less monetary value than some younger person, but it creates an overall higher human capital value, making other people make more money. So because of this, the general way of doing it is grabbing all the possible potential income that every single person will do together and then averaging it over everyone. Since you can't really predict who's the one who's going to create that amazing innovation, who's the one providing the sort of emotional labor, and really the only one you can tell is who makes the actual cash, but that's not the whole story. So in the United States, there are actually a lot of different values for what is considered a statistical life. I think the one I want to work on right now is the Department of Transportation, the people who are in charge of things like highways and road intersections, since it applies to this British example. In 2016, the Department of Transportation put a statistical life at $9.6 million. It's a lot. So if this intersection kills around two people a year, that's about $19 million per year of potential income loss. So let's say it would be possible to fix this intersection by having a signal that lets people know to stop because the signal is flashing. In Washington state, it generally costs between $250,000 to $500,000 to put in a signal and then about $8,000 a year in electricity and ongoing maintenance. That is a lot less than 19 million. Say it's in the United States, but you get the idea. It's actually much less money. So lives are super valuable, and if we applied a financial amount to a life, people could look at this situation and it would be a clear-cut scenario where it's like, well, this is costing us way more every year to not fix it and protect the bikers, so let's make sure that we fix it and make those bikers safe. But here's a counterpoint. Shouldn't we try to be saving people even if they don't pass that threshold? And also, that threshold is taking a lot of assumptions. If this was happening at like a school, right, with children versus happening near a retiree place, that brings up other situations where people start saying like, well, practically, these kids will probably make more money than the older people in a retiree location. But that adds in a lot of cruelty out of the practicality. So while averages make sense, there is good arguments that would say that this doesn't necessarily apply. This intersection is rural. There's not a lot of stuff going on there. So is the money better spent there? 
versus somewhere else. I mean, on the flip side of that though, what if one of these people who got hit on the bike were going to cure cancer? Like we can't predict that kind of thing. And thus, that's why averages make a lot of sense, but also why there are fantastic counterpoints that we should save everyone or that the value doesn't make sense. Personally, it makes sense to try to tackle this on a case-by-case -case basis and use the average as an indicator where money is best distributed. For example, have you ever heard of kangaroo mother care? This is a type of intervention for low birth weight babies. It helps them regulate temperature, it helps them bond with the mother, and it also helps the babies get out of hospitals earlier. The way it works is that the mother holds the baby to her chest and swaddles it and keeps it close. And this also helps lower the stress of the baby, the stress of the mother, and increases the likelihood the child's going to survive. In fact, the amount that increases the likelihood of survival is 30%. So this is fascinating because in South Africa between 2000 and 2010, multiple hospitals were being introduced to this kangaroo mother care. And suddenly they saw a huge bump in the amount of surviving babies. So if we look at a situation like this, the cost of saving these kids was so low because all it was was an educational piece. It wasn't that you had to build something. It was basically just getting a bunch of doctors in a room and teaching them how this worked so that they can then do it with their patients. Suddenly lives are saved. Those $9.6 million lives are here. I mean, if we really get into it too, the loss of a child is such an emotionally damaging thing for many people that it's going to cause other humans to become less productive too, and they're less likely to produce and create money. And then the people around them are also going to be sad and affected by the situation, they're less likely to produce and create money. When we're going into these arguments about if something is actually crossing a certain line, using statistical life value allows us to find that in certain places it is financially very, very sound in order to save large groups of people. So if there was an intersection or something that cost hundreds of millions of dollars to fix, even though it wasn't really making the money back, then it makes sense that people could look at it and say, all right, this isn't really crossing, let's apply it somewhere else like kangaroo mother care where we create a much greater chance of surviving, thus a lot higher amounts of human capital in the long run. So is this a perfect system? No. Is it better than having no data to make the decision? I would say so, yes. Because if we look at something like the current pandemic situation, we see 60,000 people have died already. And if each one of them are valued at $9.6 million, that's $576 billion of potential tax revenue and innovation that the United States is missing out on. So if we had this number early on, and we were able to then calculate the cost of closing an economy compared to the cost of lost lives value, we'd be able to make smarter decisions on how do we close? How do we prevent this? How do we maintain things as it goes? It's a lot easier than just making arguments of whether death or not death occurs. On an unrelated note, when you say someone looks like a million bucks, that might be an insult. 